Our dear Father in heaven, honor and praise be unto thy name, Lord, and uh, we just thank you for the gift of life and for the gift of family. And we continue praying that uh, you may give us the wisdom to raise up these families. And so as we look at uh, the presentations before us, may the words of inspiration, Father, give us the strength to do thy will in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. And so, uh, good welcome to everyone, wherever you are tuned in, wherever you are watching, or uh, wherever you are listening. This is uh, our presentations on family life, and uh, I want to bring in another aspect of family life that is uh, forming the character of, uh, of a child. This is part one. This is going to be either two-part or three-part presentation, and then uh, we can go into another series. And uh, as the Lord continue providing information, then now uh, we shall continue uh, bringing this uh, presentation so that uh, we may be educated together and we may be helped together. Or uh, if uh, when we finish this and we have more materials, they are made up, then now uh, we shall continue. And so one of uh, the greatest challenges that faces um, Christian parents is how to upbring up uh, their children. But uh, I want to encourage us that uh, the same Lord who authored marriage and uh, instituted family, he is able to help us make uh, decisions that uh, are glorifying his name and uh, be able to raise up godly families for he who has promised that he will make it happen never fails, never slumbers. In fact, I want to open up uh, this uh, presentation with uh, a sum of promise that is uh, uh, the division of Psalms 121. I just want us to be encouraged by this. The division of Psalms 121, this is a sum of uh, degrees, and uh, it should be able to uplift us in uh, whichever situation that uh, we are going on. Psalm 121, and uh, I'll be glad to project this as we enter into this presentation of uh, uh, forming the traits of the child. A sum of degrees I'll lift up my eyes unto the hills from when cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shed upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and the coming in from this time forth, even evermore. And so, this is a psalm of promise to everyone who waiteth upon the Lord. And in every aspect of our life, be it victory over sin, be it um, normal secular setup and it's working, Whenever, even if we are working on our gardens, we are working on our garments, we are working on any profession, mechanic, business, the Lord has promised that he will prosper the thing that has come out of his mouth. That is the works of his hands. He shall not leave to the enemy of souls to perplex. But with every trial, he shall uh, provide a way to escape these trials and temptation. And not only to escape, but give us the patience of and enduring to be able to do his will. And so, you know, we have a lot of stories in the Bibles. We have a lot of uh, uh, examples in the Bible where God has enabled parents to raise up their children in a godly manner. We have um, the example of uh, Seth. We have the example of uh, Isaac. 
we have uh, the example of Enoch and others. We have the example of um, Hannah raising up Samuel. And uh, there, there are many beautiful stories in the Bibles that uh, can encourage us that even so we can be able to raise our children in a godly way. And so uh, with that said, I'd like to go through some materials. And it is my sincere desire that uh, not only will I be able to present these things, but also that the Lord will enable me and others to whichever degree we are the parents, that we shall be able to raise children. We Either if we are guardians of children that have been entrusted to us, whether we have adopted children, whether it's just uh, making sure that the children of the neighbors are well, whichever setup that we are in, that the Lord will enable us to accomplish his purpose in our lives. And so, forming the traits of uh, children. And in uh, Child Guidance, page 21, paragraph 2, and we shall be going through some material, fathers and mothers need to understand their responsibility. The world is full of snares for the feet of the young, Multitudes are attracted by a life of selfish and sensual pleasure. They cannot discern the hidden dangers or the fearful ending of the path that seems to them the way of happiness. Through the indulgence of appetite and passion, their energies are wasted and millions are ruined by this world and for the world to come. Parents should remember that their children must encounter these temptations. Even before the birth of the child, this preparation should begin that will enable it to fight successfully the battle against evil. And uh, we, we shall be reading about these preparations that we have to make before even assuming parenthood, motherhood, or fatherhood. And so as uh, we prepare to get these little ones into the world, we, sh we are told that uh, whichever the situation, we should prepare the atmosphere so that the character that this little one will be formed will be character that uh, uh, really um, goes hand in hand with biblical principles of raising up children or uh, equipping children with uh, the necessary environment, knowledge, and tact to become the children of God and not the children of the evil one. And so uh, in the book of Lamentation, the book of Lamentation, um, the weeping prophet Lamentation, Lamentation chapter 2 and uh, verse 19 just as we go to the preparation of uh, these children how we can prepare an environment fit to raise them in a godly way we are told arise cry out in the night in the beginning of the watches pour out thine heart like water before the face of the Lord Lift up thy hands toward him for the life of the young children that faint for hunger in the top of every street. And one way to prepare, one way to prepare for good fatherhood and good motherhood is uh, committing everything in prayer. Every step that uh, we take should be a prayerful step that um, the Lord may show us as he showed people like Manoah, as he showed people like Zechariah and uh, Mary and Elizabeth, how to upbring up their children. It should be our desire and it should be our priority that we get a connection with the God, with the Lord so that um, he may be able to give us the wisdom. By the way, we can have a lot of knowledge and information, but that doesn't mean that that is wisdom. We can have information and knowledge but how to apply it is another issue and so not only would we want to have enough information and enough knowledge of what to do but we will want the wisdom from heaven and we are told that the wisdom that comes from heaven in the book of james is not puffed up but um let us look at that that uh, verse about the wisdom in fact, in James chapter 1, verses 5, this is uh, uh, what we are told before uh, we go to the wisdom of heaven, how it is. 
we are told, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given unto him. And this wisdom that we are talking about, we are told that um, the wisdom that cometh from heaven, um, this wisdom, um, in uh, chapter James chapter 3, verses 15, we are told this wisdom descended not, uh, sorry, we are told, who is a wise man and endureth with knowledge among you, let him show out of good conversation his work with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against uh, the truth. This wisdom descended not from above, but is utterly sensual and devilish. This wisdom that has ending strife, uh, it comes from beneath and it is devilish. And we are told, uh, but uh, the wisdom that is from above, verse 17 of James chapter 3, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. And so this is the kind of wisdom that we need uh, so that we may be able to raise up our children in a godly way. We don't want wisdom that puffs and wisdom that is from uh, beneath. Continued on, in uh, Child Guidance, page 23, paragraph 1, John was the son of their old age, that is the Kariah and uh, Elizabeth. He was a child of miracle. And the parents might have reasoned that he had a special work to do for the Lord and the Lord would take care of him. But the parents did not thus reason. They moved to a retired place in the country where their son will not be exposed to the temptation of city life or induced to depart from the council and instruction which they as parents would give him. They acted their part in developing a character in the child that would in every way meet the purpose for which God had designed his life. They secretly fulfilled their obligation. And so we are told that we have to use the force that uh, the Lord has given unto us. We should not assume because children are a blessing from the Lord that uh, he will just take care of everything. And yes, God will take care of everything. At the end of the day, he may take care of everything, but you may not enter heaven. This is not to threaten anyone. But um, when God gives us a duty, he will not do what man is supposed to do. And so Elizabeth and Zechariah did not reason that because this child is a forerun of Christ, then God will take care of everything. They look for an environment that was good to raise up this child. And so when uh, we are preparing to get a child, then we should know that um, there are preparations that we have to make for ourselves. God will not make those preparations for us. Um, again, uh, another point to consider in Child Garden, page 63.3, that uh, upon fathers as well as mothers rest a responsibility for the child's earlier as well as it is later training. And for both parents, the demand for careful and thorough preparation is most urgent. Before taking upon themselves the possibilities of fatherhood and motherhood, men and women should become acquainted with the laws of physical development, with the physiology and hygiene, with the bearing of prenatal influences, with the laws of heredity, sanitation, dress, exercise, and the treatment of disease. They should also understand the laws of mental, development and moral training. Parents should study the laws of nature. They should become acquainted with the organism of the human body. They need to understand the functions of the various organs and their relation and dependence. They should study the relation of the mental to the physical powers and the condition required for the healthy action of each. To assume the responsibilities of parenthood without such a preparation is sin. And so there's a duty line before the parents before the before the conception after conception and uh, uh, after birth 
that are their duties which are laid before us. And we are told to study the prenatal. And if you are diseased, if your wife is diseased, what action should you take before assuming motherhood and fatherhood? That uh, you may know your child is liable to contracting chronic ailments from you as the laws of hereditary uh, actually works. And so proper, uh, 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 proper steps must be taken. If there is anyone in the family with chronic disease, it should be attended to before actually anyone assumes motherhood or fatherhood. And then we have the issue so far, now the natal when uh, the mother is pregnant. And I'll be speaking about uh, postpartum, there is uh, uh, after the mother has given birth, how they should be taken care of. But um, again, th there is a lot of information uh, on the websites, in the Bible, and uh, in SOP, how uh, the, 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 the women have to be cared for. But uh, there is not a lot of information how men should be cared for the men who are uh, having their wives pregnant and uh, even after the, the wife giving a birth, how men should also be cared for. You will wonder why I'm saying that how men should also be cared for. It is a very sensitive issue, but I'll be touching on it because there is always a cry that mothers need to be taken care of uh, and uh, children need to be taken care of, but no one really uh, cares about how is the father faring on that is before the pregnancy of the mother of the wife during the pregnancy and even after childbirth no one cares about the dad but uh, i'll try to address that issue how do the men go through this period before during and after uh the the, the birth of a child and so what if uh, the parents never went to school how will they be able to really uh, learn anatomy and physiology and know what kind of foods are good for the mental, what kind of foods are good for energy. And uh, during the stages, the development stages of the child, what kind of food should the mother be fed on? How should the husband approach the wife? And uh, uh, during uh, some times after even the birth of the child, at what time should you minister certain minerals to the child and uh, so that um, the immunity of the child as it moves from um, a passive immunity into active immunity uh, that you have prepared the body of the child well so that it may be able to resist the diseases of childhood and even the future uh, diseases that we are told that uh, if the children are not uh, going to get the uh, vaccines uh, they will be liable to being uh, vulnerable to these infections. How do you take care of that? If the mother haven't studied, how do women prepare for this? And uh, that is why we have the women department in the church where actually the elder women who have been able to raise up their families and have gone through the experience of raising up the children, we are told in Titus 2 that they should be able to teach the younger women how to take care of the husbands, how to take care of their children and to bring up the family in a godly way. In fact, we are told that uh, the work of the mother is to Christianize the family and uh, to Christianize the nation. And so she has a big responsibility to play while she assumes the role of a wife, the role of a mother. And uh, uh, these are the things that needs to be taught in the church. And uh, we should have women who are able to teach this in a very similar way so that even the people who never attended schools can be able to be benefited and have a glimpse of what is needed of them as they assume parenthood. Parents, uh, we are told that uh, in Child Garden 67.2, the work of parents is to train their children in the way of the Lord. This is not a matter that can be trifled with or set aside. Without incurring displeasure of God, we are not called upon to decide what course others shall pursue, 
or how we may get on the most easily, but what saith the Lord? Neither parents nor children can have peace or happiness or rest spirit in any false path. But when the fear of God reigns in the heart, combined with love for Jesus, peace and joy will be felt. And um, you will hear the parents say, this issue of following what the Lord says is too much on me. But there is no path of peace outside Christ. He says in John 14, 27, my peace I give unto you, not like the world giveth unto you, give I my own peace. And so there is a peace that this world gives and many mothers and fathers would want to pursue the peace of this world to raise up their children. But in the end, there seems a way which is good to man, but it ends in perdition, it ends in death. We can only have true peace of rest if we are following after the Lord. If we receive that peace from Christ, then that peace is permanent. It is not temporary. And that is what we should be seeking. We should not seek to please the fancy and raise up our children the way that the, that the world raises them so that uh, they may not be social misfits. We have heard people say that uh, what you are doing is you are making your children social misfits. And why do they say that? It is because you are trying your level best according to the knowledge and the wisdom the Lord has given you to raise up your children. And people think that this is raising them up as social misfits. Uh, I can say confidently, it will be better for children to be social misfits and have a relationship with Jesus Christ and seek the balance that the Bible brings out than to bend on one side in that you want to please your relatives, you want to please churchians, and you want to please the world so that they may not call your children a social misfit. We are not here living for people, although in some quote we live for the people, we are here to live for the Lord first, and then all the rest will follow. And so parents are admonished that uh, only through biblical principles they shall have the true peace that is everlasting. To parents who have begun their training wrong, let us say that you didn't start on the right foot. We are told in Child Guide and page 69, paragraph 2, to parents who have begun their training wrong, I will say, do not despair. You need to be soundly converted to God. You need the true spirit of obedience to the word of God. You must make these decided reforms in your own customs and practices, conforming your life to the saving principles of the law of God. When you do this, you will have the righteousness of Christ which pervades that law because you love God and recognize his law as a transcript of his character. True faith in the merits of Christ is not fancy. It is of the highest importance that uh, you bring the attributes of Christ into your own life and character and educate and train your children with perseverance, persevering effort to be obedient to the commandments of God. And thus said, the Lord should guide you in all your plans of education. And so if um, we have started on the wrong foot, uh, we and not to give up uh, in parenting, we are not to give up in parenting, but uh, we should seek the Lord in everything to remedy uh, the character uh, in us before we even try to remedy the character in, uh, uh, in our children. We should uh, ask the Lord to work first on our hearts before uh, we think on uh, working on our uh, uh, on our children's hearts, because we are told that uh, mostly children are uh, a reflection of uh, who we are. Children are a reflection of uh, who we are. And so while dealing with them, we should know that uh, we are dealing with uh, uh, our own character. We should know that uh, we are dealing with our own character. I just want to share this uh, so that... Um, at least um, we may see what I, I'm saying. That um, we, we we should understand that uh, children, little children, they are uh, 
a reflection of herself and uh, I'll try to bring this so that um, we may see, but if I don't get it, then uh, I'll be able to share later that um, children are um, a reflection of uh, ourselves. And uh, so as we deal with the children, we should understand that uh, we have our Heavenly Father also. We have uh, our Heavenly Father that, uh, and this is what I wanted to, to share. We, we should understand that uh, we have our Heavenly Father who also deals with us as um, our big children. And so the way we deal with our children uh, the way we would want our Heavenly Father to deal with us is the, uh, the way we should deal with our, our children. In 7 MR, page uh, 75, paragraph 1, this is what I'm looking for. 7 MR, 75.1. And uh, I'd like to share this because we are told that these children are tender and we should be careful in how we bring them. 7 MR, this is... Um, 7MR 75.1. Parents, as you deal with your children, remember that you are dealing with a reproduction of yourselves. Therefore, be sure to examine yourselves to see whether you are indeed transformed in word and spirit. And why did I bring up this point? It's because some of the parents have started in a wrong way. They, they see the wrongs in the children, but they don't understand that the children are a reproduction of themselves. And so instead of criticizing so much the child, try to criticize yourself. And then when you find that you are converted, then you are able to deal with your, with your child. And know that you have your heavenly father who is dealing with you. So the way you like your heavenly father to deal with you, so deal with your children, knowing that they are a reproduction of yourself. And so if you are going to be harsh on your child, Try to be harsh on yourself first and uh, it will be well with you. Examine yourself first. And so if you have started wrong, do not despair. Examine yourself and go back to God and seek guidance from him. Obedient to parental authority should be inculcated in babyhood and cultivated in your child guidance 82. You cannot wait until too late. Uh, many times when uh, children want to be corrected, you hear that... Uh, you know, that is only a child. And yes, we understand this is only a child, but uh, 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 you know that you cannot bend a twig when it is old. You can only bend it when it is still young. If you try it when it is old, it will break up. So uh, the season, the best season to deal with the traits of the children is when they are still young, because when they have matured, it will be so difficult to deal with this trait that have developed into full-blown uh, character. Some parents think that they can let their little ones have their own way in their babyhood, and then when they get older, they will reason with them. But this is a mistake. Begin in the baby life to teach obedience. Require obedience in your homeschool. Child guidance, 82, paragraph 2, and that is what we are talking. You cannot bend a twig when it is old. It will only break. In uh, 82.6, we find... Few parents begin early enough to teach their children obedient. obedience. The child is usually allowed to get two or three years to the start of it is parent. Who forbear to discipline it, thinking it's too young to learn to obey. But all this time, uh, self is growing strong in the little being and every day makes it a harder task for the parent to gain control of the child. At every early age, children can comprehend what is plainly and simply told them, and by kind and judicious management can be taught to obey. The mother should not allow her child to gain an advantage over her in a single instant. And in order to maintain this authority, it is not necessary, it is not necessary to resort to harsh measures. A firm, steady hand and a kindness which convinces the child of your love will accomplish the purpose. But let selfishness, anger, and self will have their course for the first three years of a child's life, and it will be hard to bring it to submit to all some discipline. It is disposition has become soured uh, 
it delights in having its own way, parental control is distasteful. This evil tendencies grow with its growth until in manhood, supreme selfishness and a lack of self-control place him at the mercy of the evils that run riot in our land, Child Garden 82.7. And um, this issue of being kind and not harsh to the child, but uh, being firm is something, it's a principle that people don't understand. They think that um, the only way to make a child obedient is to have a road in your hand. That is the only thing people think. That is the only way the, the, the parents think that they can have the implicit uh, obedience of their children. But this is not the case because this is not even how Jesus Christ was raised up. This is not even how Joseph or Samuel was raised up. Um, there are times when the road should speak, but uh, we are told that um, we can create an environment where the child is uh, uh, born filled with the Spirit of God, as even John was born filled with the Spirit of God. And as the children watches your tenderness, as the children watches your devotional life, you know, children may not speak, but children have eyes. And their eyes really imprint information on their neurons without even them starting to speak. And so they will develop the traits of tenderness, low speaking or quiet speaking, and um, they will um, be prayerful and devotional. Be what your child, what you want your child to be. And uh, if necessary, speak wise. You can form a better trait for your children without speaking, without using the rod, by just acting out the life that you want this child to live. And then uh, uh, with, uh, uh, with all the grace that the Lord has given us, the Lord can fill our children with the Spirit in their infancy and uh, they be raised in a way that doesn't have to be caned or harsh or denunciations and abuses. Never should they, the children, be allowed to show their apparent disrespect. Self-will should never be permitted to go unrebuked. The future well-being of the child requires kindly, loving, but firm discipline. Child Guidance 83, Paragraph 1. When parents fail to require prompt and uh, perfect obedience in their children, they fail to lay the right foundation character in their little ones. They prepare their children to dishonor them when they are old and bring sorrow to their hearts when they are nearing the grave. Many Christian parents fail to command their children after them and then wonder that their children are perverse, disobedient, unthankful, and unholy. Such parents are under the rebuke of God. They have neglected to bring their children up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. They have failed to teach them the first lesson of Christianity. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Foolishness says the wise man is bound in the heart of a child. The love of folly, the desire to do evil, the hatred of holy things are some of the difficulties that the parents must meet in the home mission field. Teach your children to honor you because the Lord God lays this duty upon children. If you allow your children to lightly esteem your wishes and pay no regard to the laws of the household, you are winking at sin. You are permitting the devil to work as he will, and the same insubordination, want of reverence and love of self will be carried with them even into the religious life and into the church. And the beginning of all this evil is charged in the books of heaven to the neglect of the parents. And so the little ones before they are a year old hear and understand what is spoken in reference to themselves and know to what extent they are to be indulged. Mothers, you should train your children to yield to your wishes. This point must be gained if you will hold the control over your children and preserve your dignity as a mother. Your children quickly learn just what you expect of them. They know when their will conquers your will conquers yours and will make the most of their victory. And uh, I have seen people really uh, uh, 
get surprised at this statement that the child before one year, that is a child of nine months, understands well when they are being spoken of. I'm not talking about you speaking to them directly, but even if you sat with somebody and started talking about your nine years old, we are told that this child understands you are talking about them. Now, if the child can understand when nine months old, you are having a baby in your hands who is nine months years old, and you are talking to somebody about this child, and the child can understand, my dad, my mom is speaking about me. There is something that in itself seems mysterious, but uh, if that is the truth of the matter, how much more if you could speak directly to this child and inculcate in this child principles of uh, heavenly living? We, we sometimes think that these children do not understand us, but they do understand very well. And we are told by inspiration that uh, they are seeking or they know how they can conquer you. They know to what extent they can be indulged. So if this is the knowledge that the child is having at nine months old, how about when the child is even two or three years? And that is why we are told that let us seek to raise them up in a godly way before they are even out of their mother's womb. They do understand things. We are told at uh, the age of six months, children do understand things. This is biblical. This is not only scientific, but it's also biblical because um, when you go to the book of uh, Luke, at uh, the salutation of, uh, is it Elizabeth of Mary, the baby jumps in the womb of the mother because the baby do understand these things. And so uh, let us not wait too late to be able to inculcate uh, heavenly principles in the lives of these children. And so uh, that was a uh, child guidance, page 91, paragraph two. As uh, I try to wrap this up, we have like uh, 10 or 15 minutes. I have often seen the little one throw itself and scream if it is will was posed in any way. This is the time to rebuke the evil spirit. The enemy will try to control the minds of our children, but shall we allow him to mold them according to his will? These little ones cannot discern what spirit is influencing them, and it is the duty of parents to exercise judgment and discretion for them. Their habits must be carefully watched Evil tendencies are to be restrained and the mind stimulated in favor of the right. The child should be encouraged in every effort to govern itself. This issue of children throwing tantrums and, uh, no, and uh, stamping their feet uh, on the floor and uh, 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 rolling on the floor and their heads hitting this and that, this is the devil's influence. Mothers should educate their babies in their arms after correct um, uh, principles and habits. They should not allow them to pound their heads on the floor. Let the mothers educate them in their infancy. Command with the songs of Bethlehem. This song, soft tunes will have a quieting influence. Sing them these subdued tunes in regard to Christ and his love. Never be like a, uh, like a chestnut bar. In the home, do not allow yourself to use harsh, rasping words. You should invite the heavenly guest to come into your home at the same time making it possible for him and the heavenly angels to abide with you. You should receive the righteousness of Christ, the sanctification of the spirit of God, the beauty of holiness that you may reveal to those around you the light of life. With the firmness, they are to refuse to allow everything in the home to be handled freely and thrown about on the floor for, or in the dirt. Those who allow a child to pursue such a course of doing him are doing him a great wrong. He may not be a bad child, but his education is making him very troublesome and destructive. And so we are told that uh, one way of soothing the tempers of these children is singing them Bethlehem songs. Let the children get used to the musical atmosphere and the music should be heavenly music. And then their neurons and the pathways will grow as tender plants that are, can be able to receive instruction and be corrected. 
Some parents allow their children to be destructive to use as playthings things which they have no right to touch. Children should be taught that they must not handle the property of other people. For the comfort and happiness of the family, they must learn to observe the rules of propriety. Children are no longer no happier when they are allowed to handle everything they see. If they are not educated to be caretaking, they will grow up with unlovely character, destructive traits of character. Where is trouble? It is with the parents who let their children come up without bearing any burdens in the family. When these children go out to school, they say, Ma says she doesn't want me to work. Such a mothers are foolish. They spoil their children and then send them to school to spoil it. Work is the very best discipline they can have it is no harder for them than for their mothers. Blend the physical labor with the mental and the powers of the mind will develop them uh, better. And so I want to stop at this point where now we are from the infant to the time that the child should be attending the school. So we have just seen the introductory part, how to prepare to be a mother or a father. And when you have the baby in your hands, what um, you should do. And uh, it is my um, desire, prayer, and request that uh, we shall approach the Lord in prayer. And whatever that is seemingly difficult unto us, let us lay it before the Lord who is able to work with impossibilities. And then we shall see the fruits of trusting the Lord. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, once again, thank you for giving us a time to be able to study your word. And so we pray that you may humble us so that we may be able to raise humble children. And let your Lord be our delight. Let the principles of heaven be our principles. And let us, Lord, uh, have this grace to be able to do that which was uh, needing us to do in our own life. In the name, your name be glorified and uh, bless your parents that have children under their care and give them the wisdom to raise them up in the name of their son, Jesus Christ. Amen.